Bhagavati Vasudevaya Rayanam Namaskrityananam Chaivanarotamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tatodya Mudirayat Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. What was that? <laughs> Fra- Something. A bomb. A bomb. Uh. Okay. We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 9, Text 3. Mukam Karoti Bachala Mangamangaya Tegani Kripatadam Mande Sri Guru Ndina Tadanam. So, um, today is the Govardhan Puja celebration. And this pastime of Lord Krishna uh, advising. First of all, his father, Nanda, to worship Govardhan Hill. And then defeating Lord Indra by holding Govardhan Mountain for seven days. This pastime illustrates the verse which is quoted in the purport today. <laughs> this is the verse from 33rd verse of the Brahma Sanghita. Uh, the first word is Advaitam. You have some water you can drink. Mm-hmm. Advaita means the Lord is one without a second. There are not many gods. There is only one supreme God. Some people think that the Vedic scriptures uh, teach a what they call polytheistic religion. <laughs> and that polytheism means uh, a religion in which many gods, more than one god, is worshipped. Mm-hmm. And actually, you even read uh, some mundane scholars, they present the Vedic religion uh, by saying that originally Indra was the supreme god. But later on, uh, Vishnu took Indra's place. (laughs) So they make it sound like it's very whimsical. So, uh, but no, Advaitam, the Vedas teach that there is one Supreme Lord. And there are demigods who are empowered by this one Supreme Lord. And sometimes these demigods become puffed up by their position and their power. 
и понякога по-добре те стават, те разгордяват от тяхната сила и могъщество. And when they are puffed up, then they can no longer understand Krishna's position. Mm-hmm. So in this uh, pastime, Lord Krishna, he uh, uh, subdued Indra's pride. <coughs> the residents of uh, Vrindavan were preparing Indra Yagya, a sacrifice to please Lord Indra. But Lord Krishna wanted to establish that his devotees uh, need only worship him and no other deity. Mm. As uh, we were saying yesterday, Krishna's ultimate instruction is Sarva Dharaman Parichaja. Mami Kam Sharanam Raja. You give up any other uh, religious consideration, even if it is taught in the Vedas, give it up and just surrender to me. And don't worry uh, that you will commit an offense to some Rishi, great sage, or some demigod like Indra. I will protect you. So this is this again, this is shown in the Govardhan Lila. So when Lord Krishna he at this time he was seven years old, he saw his father and the elder coward men of Vrindavan making some preparation for a big puja. And he inquired, Why are you doing this? And so Nanda Maharaj explained to his young son the purpose of the Indra Puja. So Lord Krishna replied uh, by speaking an atheistic philosophy, which is technically known as karma limangsa. So Krishna was saying that we do not depend upon Indra. Uh, rather, Indra is depending upon us. Hmm. Because Indra being demigod, uh, he, in order to uh, be nourished in his position, requires what we offer to him. Hmm. Actually, Lord Krishna, by speaking in this way, was pointing out the fallacy of demigod worship. Mistake. That these demigods are not independent. They're not actually the Supreme Lord. They're conditioned souls. And they're just as much interested in sense gratification as the conditioned souls here on this planet. Mm-hmm. 
So, Krishna said, uh, we do not need to worship Indra because uh, we don't depend upon him. Rather, everything we need comes from Govardhan Hill. Mm. Our cows, we are cowherd men. So our cows, they graze, they eat the nice soft grasses on Govardhan. Mm. And also from Govardhan Hill are flowing so many nice streams of water which we drink and bathe in and use in our cooking. And uh, there are so many nice plants, uh, herbs, healing herbs which grow on Govardhan Hill. Mm. So in this way, Lord Krishna was describing all the opulences of Govardhan. And he advised his father that uh, there's no need to worship Indra. He doesn't give us anything. Govardhan Hill gives us everything. So we should worship Govardhan. So, <coughs> apparently, Lord Krishna was speaking an atheistic philosophy. You also hear, you'll hear people today say, oh, we don't have to go to the church to worship God for anything. Whatever we want, we'll get from the factory, we'll get from the supermarket. Mm. But actually, Lord Krishna, because He's the Supreme Lord, his uh, uh, his explanation. Okay. He was uh, um, speaking of the supremacy of his own abode. Mm -hmm. His Lord Krishna's abode is Chintamani Dham. Jintamini means spiritual gem, which yields all desires. So, uh, those who, those eternal associates of the Lord, who dwell in the Jintamini Dham Vrindavan, they require nothing from demigods. <coughs> mm. Whereas people who live in Plovdiv, uh, they may talk like that also. Well, we don't need to worship God. But they are fully dependent upon the cosmic powers for everything. Mm. So, uh, Lord Krishna's devotees, then they used all the paraphernalia meant for Indra to worship the Govardhan hill. And this made King Indra very angry. Mm -hmm. So he considered that Krishna had uh, organized a great offense against him. 
И сега казваш, че Крис не организира в голяма обида. So, being angry, he sent his clouds of devastation. But he did not know, being puffed up, he could not understand that Lord Krishna is Achyuta. This is the second word in this verse from Brahma Sanghita. Achyuta means that Krishna cannot be defeated. Mm-hmm. The third word is anadim, that Lord Krishna, He is the original, He is beginningless. Indra lives a long time compared to the life of human beings, but Indra also has his beginning and end. Mm. Uh, next is the word Ananta Rupa, means unlimited form. Mm. Lord Krishna showed that he showed the residents of Vrindavan that the Govardhan hill is also his own Ananta Rupa. This is another form of Krishna. So the residents of Vrindavan could understand when we worship Govardhan hill, we are worshipping Krishna. Hmm. But Indra could not understand this. Mm-hmm. Another word is Adyam. Yeah. That Lord Krishna is the origin of demigods like Indra. Therefore, Lord Krishna is the Purana Purusha. He's the oldest person. But Navayovanamcha, he appears as a young boy. This is what Indra could not understand. How can this naughty little boy who speaks some strange philosophy <laughs> to these villagers in Vrindavan, how can he be the Supreme Lord? Hmm. Therefore it is said, Vedishur Dulabam that through the pages of the Vedas, it is very difficult to understand Krishna. Mm. Indra is a very important demigod uh, in the Vedic system of worship. Mm. Those who follow the Vedic directions for demigod worship, uh, they, yes, they consider Indra to be very important. Mm. And Indra likewise, he thinks himself to be important. Mm. So, all this is confirmed in the Vedas. And therefore, Vedishu Dulavam, it is very difficult to understand the true uh, identity of Krishna from studying the Vedas. But, Adulavam Atma Bhaktao, when one has pure devotion of the soul, then Adulava, then it is easy. So the residents of Vrindavan, they were graced by this Atma Bhaktao, spiritual devotion. 
So they, uh, without fearing Indra, they surrendered to Krishna and they worshipped Govardhan Hill. And then when those clouds of devastation appeared over Vrindavan, they were pouring down uh, torrents of rain. The rain was coming down in streams as thick as the trunk of an elephant. And there were fierce flashes of lightning coming down. So all the residents of Vrindavan, uh, they simply came to Lord Krishna. Krishna, now Indra is angry. <laughs> what shall we do now? <laughs> so, Lord Krishna, with the little finger of his left hand, he lifted up the huge Govardhan mountain. Now this little finger of left hand is significant. In that most people uh, are right-handed. That means their right hand is stronger than their left hand. Mm -hmm. So the left hand is considered weaker. And of all the fingers on the hand, the little finger is the weakest finger. So with his weakest little finger, of course, Krishna is absolute. So it's not that his little finger is weak. But anyway, just to convince people, he lifted the Govardhan mountain with that <coughs> finger of his left hand. Srila Prabhupada says he lifted it as easily as a child picks up a frog's umbrella. Yeah, the umbrella of a frog. Oh, you said mushroom. Yeah, but I wanted to. It's called a frog's umbrella. You know this the mushroom. The frogs sometimes sit under it. <laughs> so anyway, as a child may pick up the mushroom. So Krishna, with his little finger, picked up the huge Govardhan hill. Mm. And Krishna held it up for seven days. Mm. So all the residents of Vrindavan, all the gopas, gopis, the cows, animals, they gathered underneath the hill. Now, uh, the hill, Govardhan Hill, was not actually big enough to offer shelter to the entire population of uh, Vrindavan. Big enough. It was not large enough. But when it was touched by Krishna's little <coughs> finger, it swelled in ecstasy. It grew. So it became much bigger than it originally was. Mm. 
and Indra was trying to s smash Govardhan Hill by powerful bolts of lightning. Indra se opitao da razbi Govardhan Hill čez mogoški gromoterite. But Govardhan felt those bolts of lightning to be like flowers dropping on his back. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is said that Govardhan Hill became so big by Krishna's touch that the whole, all the three worlds of the universe could have come underneath it. Mm. And on top of the hill, there were still the deer and the boars, you know, the wild pigs. These animals were still on top of the hill. These pigs, you know, with the big, they live in the forest. But although they were on top of the hill, still, because they were in contact with Govardhan, even they had no difficulty from the rain. They they were very happy, satisfied. <laughs> Uh, someone may ask, well, uh, but those residents of Vrindavan, all those cows that were under the hill, how could they eat? The answer is that they were all gathered around Lord Krishna and just by seeing him, there was no hunger, there was no thirst for seven days. Someone may ask, but so much water was falling all around, coming down the mountain and falling from the sides and also falling on the land outside the mountain. Why wasn't there a big flood? Mm, the answer is that by Lord Krishna's power, whatever water touched the earth was immediately dried up. So there were no problems. <laughs> and after seven days, Indra realized that this little boy is someone very special. And so he surrendered to Lord Krishna. He came down from heaven and bowed down at the Lord's lotus feet. Mm -hmm. He came also with Surabi, a cow from the heavenly planet. And Surabi uh, performed Abhishek upon Lord Krishna. Mm. Now, Srila Prabhupada would often uh, refer to this Govardhan Leela, this lifting of Govardhan Hill, to show how no one can imitate Krishna. Mm. There are rascals who claim to be an incarnation of God. And then, because they are incarnation, they think, I can do what I like. Hmm. There was one 
Well, there is one. He's still alive. In India, one big Mayavadi Swami, so-called. So he is uh, known, and there's always some rumors about him and his affairs with uh, lady disciples. So uh, one newspaper reporter asked him, what about these stories? You have all these young girls who are your disciples and there's so many stories about your relationship with them. And this Swami said, Krishna had his gopis. <laughs> I have my lady followers. <laughs> so they think that they can imitate Krishna. <laughs> Krishna had his Rasalila. Prabhupada would say, so you think you can imitate Krishna, then you should also lift Govardhan Hill. <laughs> hmm. What is this? To have some girlfriends and say, see, I'm doing like Krishna did. But not lifting Govardhan Hill, what kind of Krishna is this? If you want to do one, then do the other two. <laughs> but that they cannot do. So this pastime demonstrates Lord Krishna's unique position. Mm. If we surrender to Krishna, He can protect us. If we surrender to some rascal who imitates Krishna, He will not be able to protect us. <laughs> so, Krishna's pastimes are so wonderful. Because the mind is attracted to them. Actually, the Govardhan pastime is so, so charming. It's such a very popular pastime of Krishna. And yet, in these sweet and charming pastimes of the Lord, we find the ultimate truth of the Vedas is demonstrated. Mm. Our minds may not be so much attracted to philosophy, Mm -hmm. When we hear uh, it presented in a philosophical way that there are so many demigods, but they're simply Krishna's energy and Krishna's the Supreme Lord. And sometimes it's a bit tiresome for our brain. Mm. Especially because we're coming from a Western culture, so we don't have much experience with demigod worship. It doesn't mean that much to us. Mm. A long, long time ago, Bulgarians were worshipping what this Tangra or whatever is. <laughs> but all of that is forgotten. 
<laughs> so when we hear it presented in a philosophical way, we think, uh, it's nice, but is it really so important? Mm. But we like to hear about the Govardhan Leela. We like to celebrate the Govardhan Puja as we will do a little later today. This is a very blissful celebration. Mm-hmm. And when we just take a little time to understand the meaning of this Leela, then the conclusion of the Vedic, the whole Vedic teaching, becomes very clear to us. That, as we were explaining, Krishna is Advaitam. He is the one and only God. And he is Achutam. He is never defeated by anyone. Hmm. And he is an Antarupa. His forms are unlimited. So also Govardhan is one of his forms. Mm. And although he is the uh, uh, Purusha Parana, the oldest person, the original person, he, he appears as a little seven-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, and yet, that little seven-year-old boy, with the little finger, ah, this hand, left hand, little finger of his left hand, he defeated Indra, just with this little finger. Hmm. So, this is wonderful. <coughs> you agree, Madhva? Chai. Giri Govardhan ki jai. Sri Giri Raj ki jai. Govardhan puja ki jai. Any questions? Yes. Yes, well, Govardhan Hill, it, it's gradually getting smaller and smaller. <coughs> so whether the villages that you see now in Vrindavan exactly correspond to villages that were there 5,000 years ago, I cannot say. <laughs> Some villages are the same. But things change in time. So what is important is that Govern Hill gradually gets smaller. But still, is the form of Krishna. So it's still all powerful. Mm-hmm. 
Next question. Okay. In a comment that he won the materialistic uh, score to one of uh, the Ricky books, he's writing that I can accept everything, uh, but he is that uh, in order to improve uh, Vedas, uh, the devotees use Vedas. How would you comment? In order to improve the Vedas, the, the devotees use the Vedas. I don't know what he's saying. This is uh, in this book, uh, writings on Vedic uh, literature. Oh well, I, I would have to. I don't. I don't understand this point. In order to improve the Vedas, the devotees use the Vedas. Anyway, I, I can't answer this now. Anything else? Srila Prabhupada Kija! Srila Prabhupada Maharaj Kija!